What's up guys? So a couple of cameras that I haven't talked about were released recently. We've got the Nikon Z50 and we've got the A92 camera from Sony and camera from Nikon. But in the industry, we've got all these DSLR and mirrorless cameras, mostly mirrorless now. Forget about DSLR. Sorry Canon and the 90D, but we got to forget about you and move on to the future. But when it comes to that, for us video shooters, especially the ones that use our DSLR and mirrorless cameras specifically for video mostly, is there anything to get excited about? Stay tuned. Let's talk. Let me flip this thing around. Hey, so what's up? If you're new to my channel, definitely subscribe to me if you like to talk about cameras for the so if you're new to my channel definitely subscribe if you're into video using mirrorless or dslr cameras but today's topic we're definitely talking about what are these new cameras offering for us video shooters especially when using mirrorless or dslrs now the recent cameras like i was talking about the z50 from nikon or the sony a92 they're definitely great upgrades for those that are wanting to get the latest and greatest cameras in a mirrorless body. But what it's lacking, and even the ADD too, all of that's lacking any exciting video features that get us to want to use those cameras to, for like video purposes that we couldn't use with last year's equipment. Right now I'm using the Samsung NX1 and I'm recording 24 frames per second in 4K using the full, full width of the APS-C sensor. But when I look in cameras released four years later, 2019, like the Sony A9 Mark II, for example, it lets you record 4K at 30 frames per second using the full frame. What's the difference? It does 1080p at 120 frames per second. So does the NX1. Sure, the NX1's a smaller sensor, and there's dogs barking in the background. Apologize for that. Features that were new four or five years ago are still the same features that are being used today in mirrorless and DSLR cameras. The only one that's releasing anything that's actually trying to push the video specs in a combo camera and a camera that's meant for pictures and video is Panasonic as a whole, which is pushing the industry forward as much as they possibly can with video specs for cameras, such as 60 frames per second 4K such as 6K recording in the S1H. So that those features are good. Now you have Blackmagic too, but Blackmagic, when I consider that company, it's mostly meant for video only. So the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and 6K are great cameras, and they're pushing the industry forward, but at the same time, they're not hybrid cameras, which is what I'm talking about today. And today, when you look at any of the co camera competitors, what more is there to offer that isn't pushing out the specs to unseen levels and then jacking up the price. You got the ability to record RAW externally off of Nikon cameras. Now I think the next latest and greatest feature that we might want besides full frame 4K, which we're already getting in some of these cameras, is the ability to record internal RAW at a compressed RAW or at some sort of custom compression like what Blackmagic offers. Recording RAW is a bit difficult internally, but you had Magic Lantern doing uncompressed RAW on the 5D Mark III. So the reason that we can't get that today in modern cameras is, I don't know. Sure, maybe the licensing, that's dog. Let's go someplace quieter, but let me finish up first. You yeah. <laughs> know. parents house where we just had food and I wanted to talk about what I would like in a camera see I'm in a dark room right now and in this dark room I didn't even adjust the white balance in this so if the colors look a little off it's because I left the balance the white balance on this camera set for sunlight so now it's technically lit by an outside light but I should adjust the white balance in this room right now if you think of any mirrorless or DSLR camera that's not the black magic you can adjust that in post and that in itself is what I'm kind of waiting for a camera that you can adjust in post so I screwed up here but when you record raw 
you don't have to worry about screw ups. And a DSLR, a mirrorless camera that gives me that ability. And I'm not talking about 10 bit 422 color off of a flat log profile. There's only so much you can pull, the push, pull or push the covers. Uh, <laughs> see, I'm thinking about sleeping. There's only so much you can pull or push the colors before you reach your limit. But when you have, when you're recording video in RAW, you have a lot more benefit. And that's why, I, especially after I got the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and recording all, I've kind of been spoiled to where like nothing impresses me at this point. Just so wondering, look down on me. Getting to the point as I kind of flutter around here, figured I'd get a nice view while I walk. Here I am, kind of like by the water. I want as much detail as I can possibly want to get in 4K and or maybe even 6K or higher resolution. Now, DSLR and mirrorless cameras give us that. What if I mess up on the colors? What if I mess up on the exposure? Like even right now, since I have no flip screen, I'm kind of hoping that the back of the screen showed me as much as I possibly am going to get with this exposure with the harsh lighting on one side and shadow on the other side, I'm assuming, and everything I've got going. I could correct exposure if I was recording raw, where as you can't really do that as easily. You can, but not as easily when you're just recording off of H.264 or a comparable format. You just want more flexibility, and that's kind of like the point. Anyway, I'm gonna still walk. I gotta remember where the heck I parked. Boy, that's what we got going on so far. You know, it's weird that I don't normally go out too much on my um, balcony. Seeing this, I'm actually kind of weirded out in the fact that I actually don't go out on my balcony enough. But anyway, to finish up, it's kind of one of those situations where if you're gonna buy a new camera and you're looking to buy a new uh, DSLR mirrorless camera, buy the latest and greatest. But don't be too disappointed if you end up having to buy an old camera that's a couple of years old because you're probably not get, gonna get much greater specs, at least for video, than what's been relevant out there for years. And what's been relevant out there for years, I bought the 5D Mark IV when it was released in 2016. And when it was released, it had specs that were somewhat disappointing, but when you think of the specs, dual pixel autofocus, 4K recording, 500 megabits per second. Then you look at a camera that was released in 2018 that was mirrorless camera, but still 4K recording, dual pixel autofocus at 480 megabits per second. Sure, different codec, but not much changed. 8-bit 422 in both. And what are you really getting the more you pay for it these years? And unless you look for a camera that gives you these exact specs and deliver that you want, and you're willing to pay that higher end price tag, maybe you should just kind of go less expensive until you really get what you need in a camera. That's what I got to say about that. You can always like, share, and make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later. This balcony's kind of cool. <laughs> See ya. Flip it out.